there lived Jesus, a wise man, if indeed one ought to call him a man. For he was one who wrought surprising feats and was a teacher of such people as accepted the truth gladly. He won over many Jews and many Greeks. He was the Christ. When Pilate, upon hearing him accused of men of the highest standing among us, had condemned him to be crucified, those who had in the first place come to love him did not give up their affection for him. On the third day he appeared to them, restored to life, for the prophets of God had prophesied these and countless other marvelous things about him. And the tribe of Christians, so called after him, has still to this day not disappeared. What Ms. Sarah just read there was from an historian by the name of Joseph. Folks say, well, you have the account of the resurrection in Scripture, but well, this, is, this is a separate account. This is an historian. From that time, and he reads exactly what he knows. So we have it that Jesus was resurrected. And that was the finish of his earthly mission. They loved us unconditionally that he saved his only begotten son. That whoever shall believe shall not perish and have everlasting life. For Jesus did not come into this world to destroy it, but to save it. We're going to talk about King Jesus. In your bulletin, you'll see the order of selection on the left side of your bulletin. On the right, you'll see all the references that we're going to use. There's some references that are references that we're not going to explain today, but they're in there for you. You can take your bulletin home, use it as a Bible study on the subject that we're speaking about today, and love to have you bring it back and let us know what God was telling you about the, the subject matter that we're talking about. Paul tells us of a confession Jesus made and witnessed before Pontius Pilate in 1 Timothy 6.13. It's a confession of kingship. This confession is found in all four Gospels. And the one thing that I want you to understand is that it's not that I will be king. But the confession says I am king. There is a big difference there. Confession in John 18.37 says, this is Pilate speaking, Are you a king then? Pilate asks. Jesus says, You say that I'm a king. Jesus replied, I was born for this. Now if you make notes, make a note of this little section right here. If you underline, underline, highlight your scriptures, whatever you do. Because this is key. I was born for this. And I have come into the world for this, to testify to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. So Jesus made absolutely no bones about it. He was born for this. And he came into this world to testify. What was he testifying? He was testifying about the Father, about his being the Messiah. So we're going to give you three points. On Jesus, King. Our first point is that he was born a king. Matthew 2.2 2 says, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. The wise men were traveling because of the star. They were coming to see the baby king. That was described in scripture. They asked King Herod, Where is he? King Herod asked his advisors, and they pointed him to Bethlehem, to Jesus. Pilate must have been really perplexed when Jesus said to him that he was born for this. He came into this world to testify. Jesus had his deities. He was king. 
There are plenty of references to Jesus being king. You can find in Psalms 24, 7 through 10 that he's the king of glory. John 1, 49, the king of Israel. 1 Timothy 6, 15, king of kings. Revelation 15, 3, king of the saints. Those are all in your bulletin. There is no doubt that Jesus was king. The second point is that Jesus was a serving king. Matthew 20, 28 says, Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. A leader leads by example. During the war, the soldiers want to see the general on the battlefield. They want to see him up front. They want to see them leading by example. Why? Because it shows that they have a commitment to what they're asking them to do. A true leader is selfless. A true leader is willing to do whatever it takes to protect those that he leads. They're willing to roll up their sleeves and get into the trenches with them instead of pointing their fingers. A true leader is someone that has the constitution to do what he's about to ask somebody else to do. Jesus used his authority to serve others all through his life, all through his ministry. We see that he commanded nature to help those that he loved. He conquered Satan and he set his people free. Let me just say a life of service leads to a life of eternity with Jesus. If you're willing to serve him as king, following his footsteps that he has already done, you can have an eternity with him. Jesus in his ministry, he served by healing the sick. He served by forgiving them of their sins. He served by being the selfless example of what we are supposed to be to have a relationship with the Father. Amen. No one can accuse Jesus of being a hypocrite to the Father and the Word. And the third point. Jesus died a king. Jesus, king of the Jews, read the placard nailed to the cross. John 19, 19 says, Pilate also had a sign lettered and put on the cross. The inscription was, Jesus the Nazarene, king of the Jews. Jesus was mocked. He was mistreated. He was abused and tortured. For the ministry. His robe was gambled for. He had a crown of thorns placed on his head and he was nailed to a cross to die a miserable death. To complete the ministry for you and I. To eradicate sin. Sin's hold upon us. As a leader he went first. To fulfill the ministry so that we can follow. Even with all that, he was witnessing and saving folks to the end. He saved the thief upon the cross. He asked forgiveness for those that are torturing him. He prayed for the crowd. He finished his earthly mission and defeated death and Satan. By being a leader, by being a king, a true king, by being the one that was willing to go first. It's no wonder a Christian's glory is symbolized in the cross. Paul says in Galatians 6.14, But as for me, I will never boast about anything except the cross for our Lord Jesus Christ. The world has been crucified to me through the cross, and I to the world. There has
has to be a path. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, there is a path of sacrifice, a path of dying to self, a path willing to serve your Lord and not yourself. There has to be times, if you're a believer, that you make choices that is betterment for the glory of God instead of the betterment for you. You have to make choices that is more comfortable for the glory of God than it is comfortable for you. And until you stop living for self, you will never be on the path of sacrifice. You will never be a leader in the Christian way. Because you're not willing to do what Scripture tells you to do. The cross is a picture of salvation and a path to service. You have to understand when you said, yes, Lord, forgive me of my sins, you took on a responsibility. You took on an obligation. And that obligation was to be like Christ. And now we'll never fulfill it. But that should never be the excuse for you not to try you have an obligation to serve Jesus. You have an obligation to walk that path of selflessness. You have an obligation to die to self. You have an obligation to care for others. As you include yourself. You have an obligation to think about what Jesus would do instead of what you truly want to do. You have an obligation to stop playing church and start being the church. Because there's too many folks that wants to ride the fence and not serve their God in a way that would discomfort them. Too many folks that have a too big of a self instead of a selflessness. Too many folks that want to make excuses why we don't do the things necessary that Jesus had done when it comes to our walk. God expects us to fulfill our obligation, to fulfill our commitment to Him. Too many people in society today want to blame other people for their walks. Too many people in society today want to buy into the excuses that it's acceptable in society, the things that are going on. Too many people don't want to die to self to serve Jesus. Jesus died on the cross. He finished his mission here on earth for us so that we can have eternal life if we're willing to follow him. Luke 9.23 says, Then he said to all of them, or to them all, If anyone wants to come with me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. That's about as plain as it gets. You see, the path to the cross, the path to salvation, to be like Christ, is riddled with trials and temptations. The moment that Jesus finished his baptism, the next scene is the Holy Spirit leading him into the wilderness to be tested by Satan after his fasting for four days. <clears throat> the, the testings and the trials and the temptations. We see suffering. A dying to self. And we see a willingness to sacrifice for worship. We see Jesus who is willing to get up early in the mornings to have communion with the Father in prayer. We see Jesus willing to pray in the afternoons to find the Father's will and do the Father's will. We see Jesus in the evenings praying to the Father. These are things that tell us that there is a master over us. That we have a responsibility to a master who saved our soul from an eternity of hell because of what he did on the cross. To be morally found right according to scripture. To physically serve in all areas. The path pales. The troubles and the trials of the path they pale into comparison 
when eternity looks you in the eye and claims your soul. Because no matter what you went through on this earth to collect your rewards for Jesus, you're going to be praising God that you walk that path. Because one day, you will enter that door. Fortunately, some people never think about eternity until they're about to step into it. But Jesus saw his path. He saw what he had to do. And it was a path of sacrifice. It was a path full of torture and torment. And it was a path that he was willing to take for you and for me. And for all those that persecuted him. Now, I appreciate your attention, but I really need you to pay attention to me right now. If there's anything you can take home, let it be this. A lot of churches are going to preach the Easter story, the cross, the agony, and the pain, and of dying on the cross for your sin. That's the action of Easter. But to me, let me tell you what the story of Easter is. I don't believe a lot of churches get the story, and I believe they miss it. Have I got your attention now? It's in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. It says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to the confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but one who has been tested in every way as we are yet without sin. Therefore, let us approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us at the proper time. The story of Jesus going to the cross is the actions necessary to be taken so that he could be your high priest. You see, because Jesus went through everything possible that you could go through while you live here on this earth. He could identify with you and minister to you. No one can give comfort like the one that had to do the same thing before. If someone that has a breakup in their relationship and they're hurting, the best one to give comfort is someone that has been there and been through that. Amen? Amen. So the Easter story is about a Jesus, a high priest that can identify with anything that you're going through right now. He can identify with your trials and your temptations. He can identify with your sufferings and your, and your agonies. Because he's already been through those things. And that is the true Easter story. Jesus did what he did on the cross for your sin. So that if you accept him, you can be saved. But whatever you're going through, he can identify it with. He knows. Because he's already experienced it. You have a Jesus that is in touch with you. And not out of touch with you. Why? Because he chose to die to self. He chose to be that servant leader. He chose to get involved. He chose to come to this earth as king. He chose to live the life that he did. He chose the temptations and the trial. He chose to die on that cross for your sins. It was not forced upon him. It was volunteering. And why? So that he can minister to you no matter what you're going through. He sits at the right hand of the Father right now. And he knows where you're at. He knows your struggles. He knows the trials that you're going through. And he is willing to help you through those things. That's the true Easter story. The Easter story that we don't seem to look at when it comes to Easter. We look at the action. But we never look at the end result. And the end result of the suffering and dying on the cross 
was so that he could be your high priest. That he could minister to you in the trials. So when you're in that lonely spot that you are, and the tears are coming down your face, and you can't breathe because of what's going on, you can look up and cry out to Jesus, and he can comfort you. He can minister to you. He can save your soul from an eternity of hell. Amen. Because of what he did for Easter. That is the Easter story to me. The comfort that I have a Father in heaven that knows everything that I'm going through. And is willing to minister to me. Jesus has all authority in heaven and earth. Matthew 28, 18. One day he will return. Philippians 2, 9 through 11 says that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is king. Everyone will know Jesus is king. The world will one day acknowledge Jesus as king of kings and lord of lords as Revelation 19, 16 says. I guess the important question today is, will that day that you acknowledge Jesus, King of Kings and Lord of Lords in your life be today? Is this the moment in time when everything has come together for you to be here to accept Jesus Christ as your King and Savior? Is this it? Don't miss it. Is this the time that you kneel for your King? Is this the time that you cry out for your king? Is this the time that you've had enough of what life has to offer that you're willing to accept the comfort that Jesus can give you? We will reign with Jesus forever, Revelation 22, 5. But my question is, uh, are you ready for that? Are you ready to make this the greatest day of your life? Are you ready to accept Jesus as your personal Savior and everything that He has to offer to you and release those sins? And if you're a believer in Jesus Christ and you're not following Him, and you don't need me to explain what not following Him means, if you're willing to start dying to self, if you're willing to, to come back to the path that the high priest is offering you, this can be your day as well. Because one day, and mark my words, He will return. And everyone will confess that He is King of kings and Lord of lords. I just hope it's today for you. Because Jesus died on the cross for your sin. He took everything that this world had to offer him in punishment for you. And now he sits at the right hand of the Father. Bow your heads with me if you will. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, or if you're watching us by video and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you can change that. All you have to do is say this prayer. You don't have to say it out loud, but you do have to mean it. With every head bowed, please, every eye closed. Lord, forgive me of my sins. I'm lost, and I need you in my life. Replace my will with yours, and I will follow you for an eternity. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. With every head still bowed, every eye still closed for just a few more minutes. If you said that prayer through our video ministry, welcome to the family of God. We invite you to come here to Shine Light Baptist Church, 294 Mount Vernon Avenue, Marion, Ohio, 43302. And tell us about that decision that you made so that we can give you the tools to start your walk as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Maybe you have a home church or your family has a church that you're more comfortable with. Then we encourage you to go to that pastor and tell them about your choice so they can help you start your walk as a disciple. Now, if you're here today and you said that prayer, don't be afraid of that prayer. 
Don't be afraid of that voice telling you that you need him in your life. If you said that prayer today, with every head is bowed and every eye is closed, all I want you to do is just raise your head and look up at me. And I'm going to ask you three questions. If you said that prayer today, just raise your head up. Nobody's looking. Did you say that prayer today? Is there one that said that prayer today? Maybe you're here today and you're a believer in Jesus Christ. Maybe God's telling you that your walk isn't where it needs to be. There is forgiveness and comfort and compassion at the altar of Jesus Christ. Maybe you need to get things right. Maybe you need to join a local fellowship. Whatever it may be that God has on your mind, whatever kingdom business that the Holy Spirit's telling you to do, my prayer is that you'll do that. But you see, the mission here at Shine Light Baptist Church is to make your walk better when you leave than when it was when you came in. To my left, your right, we'll have prayer warriors standing by to help you with those choices and counselors to talk with you. To my right, your left, this is where you can be alone with God. And if you're not sure about coming down front, you can just raise your hand. We have prayer warriors throughout this congregation. If you raise your hand, we will send them to you. They will pray with you in your seat. We're going to do everything that we can to minister to your walk today. Because we love you. Because we are commanded as God to love. Alright, you may look up, stand with us if you will, but very good.